Hello, I'm Adam, hailing from Parts Fun Known, and welcome to the first episode of No Rolls Barred, our brand new wrestling RPG series. Now, before we start, just to let you know that the system we'll be using today and for the entire series is based on an existing game called Worldwide Wrestling, designed by Nathan D. Powerletta. It's actually a simplified version of that game we're using, so if you like this episode and want to check out the full experience, perhaps play a game of your own, please check out Nathan's website link in the description below. Now, before I throw you into the action, because this is our very first episode, let me run through how this game works. So follow me over to my rules table. So, the players in No Rolls Bard, represented by these adorable little pieces of collectible intellectual property, are going to be put in promos, matches and segments by the DM. Every time they do something which requires skill or luck, they're going to roll 2d6 dice and tell us the result. Each result is going to be changed by stats and every single class, be they wrestler or high flyer, in this case monster, in this case technician, they're going to have different stats. For example, they'll have look, which is to do with their gimmick, how charismatic they are, power, which is based on, you know, how powerful they are, real, which is how good they are at working stiff and actually injuring people, and of course their work, which is how good they are at doing the wrestling. So that's pretty much all there is to it. You ask to do something, you roll some dice, and if the results based on adding your stat adds up to more than seven, you've succeeded at it. If it's more than 10, that is a hard success. If it's less than seven, oh noes, you failed. Each time the GM will describe what happens. But if you roll a double six, that's a critical success with fantastic results. However, if you roll snake eyes, a double one, that is a critical fail which will have disastrous consequences. That is all you need to know to play. So sit tight and enjoy the first episode of No Rolls Barred. I'm gonna drop you now into the world of CBW. Take it away, Tom. Hello and welcome to City British Wrestling, where the big boys are big boys. I'm Tom, Head of Creative here at CBW. Let me introduce you to our players. Hi, I'm Laurie. I am playing Tony the Milkman, who is the veteran class. I'm Ollie. I'm playing Golden Joe, who's the golden boy. I'm Luke, and I'm playing Silver Bro, the brother <laughs> of Golden Joe. I'm the gatekeeper. <laughs> uh, hi, my name's Lolo, and I will be playing the Denim Matrix, and I am the anti-hero. Hi, I'm Adam, I'm Kid Flips, and I'm the High Flyer. It's <laughs> <laughs> cool. Right, Ooh. let's do a fight. We find ourselves in a packed concert hall, audience sitting on three sides. On one end of the room, a long steel ramp leading to the ring which waits in the centre. The whole arena is decked out in the red, gold and blue of City British Wrestling. The audience are cheering, clapping, screaming for blood. Yeah. 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 Kill someone! Yeah. A voice <laughs> comes in over the announced speaker. Welcome everyone to City British Wrestling and welcome to Sunday Night Lightning. Prepare yourselves as these turnbuckle titans clash inside and outside the ropes in the name of power, pride, and personal vendetta. Yes. Let's waste no more time and welcome to the ring your current city British champion, Apex! The audience hushes. The lights dim everywhere, except for the very top of the ramp, where backlit by a sickly green and grey glow, steps out a absolute mountain of a man, easily standing seven feet tall, carved as if carved from granite or stone. This massive, broad-shouldered, nasty-looking fella, wearing these heavy-looking work trousers, big, thick, heavy-looking boots, head bowed and covered by a piece of cloth serving as some kind of makeshift hood, a belt made of steel chain wrapped around his waist, 
more steel chain wrapped around his wrist as Gauntlet stands there and just listens to the silence. Then slowly makes his way down the ramp towards the ring. There is a heavy clang under each footstep and you see as his foot leaves the ground that he has left a dent in the metal way. Oh and my oh. god! It's a big boy! Big boy! His serious chest <laughs> rises and falls and rises and falls and rises and falls. As he reaches the bottom of the ramp, he stands, raises his head, pulls back his hood, and this shaved, bald, thick-jawed, deep-set-eyed, snarling face just glares at the assembled CBW audience. He breathes in thickly through his nose, puts one hand on one of the ropes, and then vaults himself in one feet of incredible muscular strength up and over and into the ring. He walks slowly to the center. You can see the mattress itself almost seems to buckle under the sheer density <laughs> oh of his muscular weight. Big boy. <laughs> and as his music fades, he reaches for a mic. I am strong. <laughs> you, you are all weak. None <laughs> of you have the power to defeat me in or outside the ring. In five weeks' time, the day after the colossal Hustle. I will have been City British Champion for 1,000 days. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Whoa, that's a lot of days. And there is no one day, right? who can stop me. First of all, there's just dry ice everywhere. <laughs> and slow lasers are in sets of four crossing and up and down, up and down. Everyone turns, so I see at the top of the ramp there is a giant zipper. <laughs> a huge dem denim, beautiful canvas. And as it slowly, the zip unzips, seductively, yet powerfully. <laughs> and doesn't fly. get, it's shush! <laughs> it's a gigantic fly. And all the way down to the base, and then 20, mechanical robot pairs of jeans <laughs> run down the ramp in a sexy stampede. And they all start dancing in unison and then denim jackets come out as well. <laughs> and they're all just dancing as if there's invisible people. The denim jackets can fly a little bit. And then on a little tiny motorbike made of nothing but denim <laughs> rides in a ridiculously badass woman, head to toe in ripped stonewashed denim with a full denim mask, a huge green pony, and eyes that look like she's going to kill you. She rides the bike down the ramp, jumps off the bike, flips, and then lands on the jeans that are now in a giant <laughs> human pyramid. She stands on top, snaps her fingers, they drop, not only they drop, <laughs> they disappear, and she stands there in full, full glory. Denim! Denim! I'm shocked, I'm shocked by how much Jesus All these half people <laughs> just walking around. <laughs> The wrong trousers just yeah. running around. I've just got so many people in my pocket. Um, oh, it's so good to be here. Oh, look at you. You've just grown so much. Look at your smiling little face. How long have you been raining? Is it, is it 10 days? Is it? Oh, sorry, is it 10 days? Oh. <laughs> Do you know what? You look like you could put up a really good shelf. <laughs> Do you put up shelves or are you just there to get things off the top one? <laughs> no. Roll on look. <gasps> that is seven. 
No, it's not. No, it's not. That is it's five. five. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I thought you. I was about to be like, yeah, sure. I thought you had more luck than that. <laughs> sorry. Okay, it's fine. Apex reaches out a massive skull sized hand closes it around your microphone and just crushes it into electrostatic and metallic powder. It's okay, I don't need a microphone. I've got a voice loud enough for the stadium. Oh, you should really look after your anger management, sweetie. <laughs> you are very lucky I have a match to fight. Very, very lucky. Please tell me where you got those bangles from. I <laughs> that is strike one. Out of how many, dear? That <laughs> is strike two. Aww. <laughs> he reaches back a hand and just lunges towards your face. So roll on work for me. That's not, that's six. Your work is minus one. You're <laughs> minus one! <laughs> it looks like he's going to try to grab your throat or grab your face, but instead what he does is just collide a huge meaty palm straight with your nose, sends you about three feet back across the ring and onto the mat. He looks at the blood on it. Mix it up with a big fat purple tongue <laughs> and then stomps across the ring towards you. Ready for strike four. Was that strike three? At this point, the little tiny man in a striped referee shirt runs in. <laughs> Slow, Apex, please, no, just save your strength. You know, you, you know, you know, you have a match to fight against. Well, well, right now, just. Apex is snorting these big like gusts of steam out of his nose, still locking eye contact with you. His eyes are bloodshot. There's a vein sort of popping out the side of his head. Okay. You just, please, you, you have, you have a match to fight. Lucky, lucky woman. And he stalks off to the corner of the ring. He just leans back against the turnbuckle. What's that? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, so, I'm so sorry, could you please, could you please clear the ring? We have, we have a match to get to. Fine. I'm gonna summon my jeans. <laughs> <laughs> and I form into a giant horse and I get onto the denim horse and I stride out the ring. Magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you stride off out of the rain on your denim horse. The uh, little ref tries to sweep away some of the, the dust and the blood and right some of the slightly buckled parts of the mat as best as he can with his hands, so at least it looks smooth. Goes over to uh, Apex, just seems to be trying to calm him down and calm him down. And then the voice announces over the uh, speaker system, ding, 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 the following contest is scheduled for one fall. One fall. Making his way to the ring from Puddington, Yorkshire, weighing in at 225 pounds, the Milkman. Woo! Woo! So, a milk float <laughs> drives onto the stage. On the back of it, a slightly aged, uh, kind of greying haired wrestler but still got a sort of big 80s style quaff to his hair uh, he's wearing a sort of white milkman's jacket white trousers a bit of a paunch sticking out of the middle as this happens two Bavarian milkmaids come from either <laughs> side of the stage along uh, they meet up in front of the milk float he steps off of the milk float onto the sort of uh, the bars holding the churns over their shoulders and begin, they begin to walk him down to the ring as he balances quite precariously <laughs> on top of these bars. On the way, he's got a little uh, milk crate with the handle. He's handing out bottles of milk to members of the audience as he goes. He gets to the apron, steps onto the apron, takes a swig of the milk, and in Triple H style fashion, <laughs> <laughs> Tony has arrived. <laughs> um, and with the ding of the bell, the match starts. Uh, it will start, of course, with Apex in control as the champ and the man in his physical prime. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and he just starts stalking towards you straight away. Could you roll on power, please? <laughs> That's oh, <good>. yeah. Three. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> he just immediately, with a, a thick, almost rock hard forearm, collides with the top of your chest, knocks you to the mat, and then stamps really hard on your stomach. <laughs> oh. Milk. <laughs> <laughs> Milk and a, and a little bit of blood. <laughs> He just stands there with his foot still on your stomach, staring over you. Stay down. No! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try and push his foot off. Uh, roll and add power. Ooh, uh, five. Oh, oh my god. Tony. Um, you, <laughs> as your hand grips around his foot and you try to push, you hear a crack as one of your fingers breaks. Oh. Oh. It's going to make the round harder. <laughs> And he just seems to, p- you seem to feel almost the, the, uh, the boards beneath the mat buckling now under the force of him pushing you down with them. I think you can hear the wood creak and break a little bit. And he just keeps pushing you further and further with his foot. I'm going to try and twist his foot and turn it into sort of a reverse ankle lock type. Thing. Okay, roll and work for that. Hey! That's, my yeah, that's, hey! that's a 10. Amazing. He uh, loses his balance slightly. Um, Drops down to one knee, his back facing you, his ankle out. You have your hands around his ankle. What are you doing? I'm going to start le- like levering up over him and just trying to wrench his leg off. Okay. Um, roll on power for that. Oh, yeah. I've gone well. <laughs> it's a Rolling on power. I know. <laughs> I'm not good at anything. <laughs> got look. Um, yeah. It was a four. Um, his, the, the, the thick sinew and muscle of this man's body just doesn't seem to be turning. Uh, he just seems to be resting now. You can see a slight smile forming a corner of his face. He's just letting you push and try and exhaust yourself. He's not even really moving. Okay. I'm going to go old school, bringing in some chops. I'm going to start trying to light him up with chops across the chest. Um, Let's see how badly this goes. <laughs> um, that, that's going to be power. Oh, no. oh, Tony, man. Oh. Tony's old school. <laughs> it's a five. <laughs> 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 Your first I'll get it. <laughs> Hang on. I'm going to get it. Your first chop connects, um, and it's the same hand where you, one finger seems to have broken. Oh. Another finger just crack goes as it collides against his body. As you go in for the second chop, he grabs your wrist with one of his hands and just slowly starts to twist it back further oh. and further and force you back onto the ground. With his other hand, just puts his hand right across your face. Oh, no, no, Tony! That's, that's the moneymaker! That's the squeeze your skull. You, you, can hear, you can hear that sort of that, that creaking sound in your own bones now in your head. You can feel pressure going down in your brain. Uh, what are you doing? Okay. Yeah, I can attempt to sweep the leg with my, like... Yes. Yeah. Go on, Tony. Come on, Tony. Is it a power thing? Uh, no, so sweep can be a... I think sweep can be work. That's good. Yeah! yeah. Ten. Keep rolling the work! <laughs> Keep you do rolling. wrestling moves. Stop trying to be powerful. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you successfully sweep. You hit him under, underneath the leg. He falls back onto his haunches. Um, his eyes just blaze in rage at this point, oh. and he lunges at you with both hands, grabs you by the shoulders, <laughs> and then lifts you off the ground. <laughs> like bottle caps are just falling out <laughs> of my pockets. Uh, he's just yeah, he's just holding you there, one hand around each shoulder. Just very slowly bringing your body closer towards him. Oh no. I'm gonna go try and do like a double drop kick and sort of push myself away. Okay, you can work, you can roll and work for that. It's not going well. <laughs> it's, a, it's a six. Um, so you draw your knees into kick, you spread them out to connect, and you hear your knees go. Oh! As there just seems to be no give against this immovable object. That's another six months of rehab. (laughs) She falls to the ground now with busted knees, two busted fingers, some kind of maybe minor fracture in your skull, and he just closes both hands around your face. Now, one around the front where your mouth is, one around the back, and just is using the full force of both of these massive mitts to just squeeze your skull into some tiny little pearl-sized shape. Um, Adam, can you please describe to us who leaps into the ring at this point? So, um... Skateboarding down the ramp. 
<laughs> wearing a neon green cap that is turned backwards with the top of it cut off, revealing bleach blonde hair coming out the top, uh, wearing a red bandana as a mask, like Raphael from the Ninja Turtles. Uh, he's wearing a tie-dye spiral extra-large shirt. He's wearing denim jeans, which are on backwards, so he can put his hands in the pockets like that. <laughs> Um, he is the epitome of the 90s. It's your boy. It's Kid Flips. <laughs> Kid Flips! Yay, Kid Flips! Flips. Uh, he so flips. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Aye. Okay, so he uh, skateboards down the ramp, and as he gets to the apron, he uses the force of the... Um, the skateboard colliding with the ring apron to flip him over the ropes and uh, basically lands on um, your uh, apex's hand, kind of like breaking, well, trying to break the hole <laughs> around um, the Milton's head. Poor Tommy. Kid. Oh, that's gotta be good, right? Uh, that's 11. Whoa. Oh. So your skateboard connects with the bones on his big fingers. Um, Something, a sound which Apex hasn't heard himself in an incredibly long time, the sound of his own bones starting to crack or break. He immediately, instinctively lets go in pain. I, um, I square up to him and say, Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Which, to clarify, <laughs> isn't me. <laughs> um, you on, told him, lad. <laughs> uh, I say, roll on power. Okay. My oh. power is minus two. Oh, <laughs> that's not good. Ooh, that is six. Amazing. Um, <laughs> well, of course it's minus two. Not amazing. Bad. Bad indeed. He grabs you by the scruff of the shirt, picks you up in one hand, and just with one arm tosses you out over the top rope, out of the ring. Bye! <laughs> back into the audience and turns his attention back no! to the milkman. Leave me alone! <laughs> your arms, your hands, your skull broken. He just drops down to one knee. Um, gets his massive arm under one leg and goes for the pin. One, two, three. Ding, ding, ding! Your winner and current city British champion, Apex! Yes. He's too big! A pricks, more like. Yeah! <laughs> even That's though the bell is gone and even though the match is over, that furious bloodshot look in his eyes is still there exacerbated by both Denimatrix and Kid Flips. <laughs> no. <laughs> he stands over you and smiles a really cruel smile and just moves towards your face again with his hands. Oh no. Something kid. <laughs> so, uh, in the background of the shot, you could see that I am crowd surfing <laughs> my way around to the ring. Like, crowd surfing like, on his, like, like, stood up. He's just, like, working his way down. Uh, he leaps, uh, he basically says, Come on, lads, heave ho and cowabunga! And he uh, uses their force to leap from the crowd onto the top ring apron, and he leaps and tries to connect with a double drop hit to the back of Apex's head. Um, go for work on that, for sure. Work wow. plus two. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> so just as these hands are moving towards your face. You just see, silhouetted um, by the light, <laughs> in midair, um, the, the radical figure of <laughs> Kid Flips, like some kind of skateboarding angel come to save you. Um, like Half-pipe Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get crunk! <laughs> um, there's a Here's crack, a <laughs> and you, you connect beautifully with the back of Apex's head. He stumbles forward, and his hands slam down onto the mat just above your head. Ooh, I'm going to try and scoot out underneath him. <laughs> um, go for... Uh, go for uh, we can rough a work on this for sure. Ooh, that's gone well. Uh, nine. Tell us where you scoot out to. Gonna go try and just like basically shoot myself underneath his legs and then get up and run in the ropes. And I'm gonna come try and come back from that and hit him so he's down even further. Okay. Um, yeah, you can run and work for that too. Yeah, nice. Uh, eight. He's just getting up to his feet just as he turns around to face you. Um, your move connects and he's knocked back again against the ropes. His eyes seem to have gone now more than just bloodshot to be almost completely filled with red. He screams this huge <laughs> Dips his head down and storms towards you, runs towards you like some kind of stampeding bull. Quick, Tony, let's do our double team move. <laughs> What's it called? I don't know. <laughs> let's just do a low bridge is what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> At that moment, <laughs> St. 
Striding down the ramp is a tall, beautifully muscled, well-oiled, square-jawed, high-cheekboned, handsome man of exceptional breeding in dress trousers, <laughs> wingtip shoes, uh, barrister's silks, and a powdered wig. It is QC, the voice of management, and he looks both superior, disdainful, and very, very annoyed. He makes, wastes no time making his way down the ring, wastes no time getting up the steel steps and into the ring itself. Stands in the centre, both his arms out, to stop the uh, collision between uh, wrestlers, which is about to happen. Says... Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> it seems like today we have... Too many troublemakers getting in the middle of perfectly good booking. <laughs> now, 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 what are we going to do about this? Kid flips, you jumpity young upstart from the streets. What in heaven's name possessed you to interfere in another wrestler's match? Well, do dog, um, this fart knocker over here was getting jiggy with me home slice. And that ain't all that and a bag of chips. What? <laughs> he was, he was hurting my friend. And the match was over and he was trying to hurt him. And I was raised by a good woman to respect me elders and protect my friends. Now, he looks clearly, clearly really tired about how the audience are applauding this and going behind it. Now, listen to me, dude. <laughs> this is professional wrestling where people can do and will get hurt. Interfering with a match to stop a wrestler getting hurt is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Did you have a hand in this, milkman? You'll have to forgive the lad. He's, had, he's clearly had too many opal fruits today. He's, <laughs> he's just a bit hyper. I've been trading him in wrestling for many years. He is my finest protege, but I did not ask for this. I wanted to go out against this man, against Apex myself, to prove that I am the finest, holest, purest milkman you've ever seen. I've gone off on a different accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, there's nothing in wholesome and pure about interrupting a match. We are five weeks away, lest I remind you, gentlemen, from the colossal tussle. It's a very important mm. time of year for everyone here at CBW. <sighs> Can't be having things like this, interruptions from... Young whippersnappers on skating boards or denim-clad horse-riding... I don't even know how to describe what she is. No, I think... We, I think we need to find a solution for this problem, yes. Maybe, maybe one troublemaker is fine to keep the roster interesting, but two... Two is starting to really upset management. So... I'm going to make this very simple. At the end of today's episode of Sunday Night Lightning... Crack <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. You, Kid Flips, and the Denim Matrix will fight. The winner remains on the roster. Oh. The loser will be fired. Oh, oh snap! Fuck! <laughs> Okay, so with the stipulation set down, stagehands, the referee, uh, QC's paralegals help clear the ring <laughs> until it's nothing but empty canvas again. And with the ring empty and the crowd wet with anticipation, hot with anticipation. It's a moist crowd in here tonight, everyone. It's a really Ooh. moist crowd. <laughs> Are we keeping that in? Ooh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's CBW, you know what you're buying, do you? There's nothing like British wrestling fans, are there? <laughs> all dance, all of them. Freud and I want to have sex with my mum's. <laughs> we'll get to that. <coughs> with the crowd hot <laughs> with anticipation, the announcer's voice rings out. 
Ding ding ding! The following match is scheduled for one fall. One fall! The winner will receive a CBW Tag Team Championship match at this year's Colossal Tussle. Now, making their way to the stage from Little Glittering, Redding, Golden Joe and Silver Bro, the Precious Metals! Smoke fills the top of the stage. Lasers, light beams, whatever they're called, fire through the smoke. On the trons, on the giant video screens, is just stock footage of people being helped by Golden Joe. So there are a few people building a house, Golden Joe's laying the bricks. There's a few people preparing a family dinner, Joe's there serving up the plates. There's a presentation in an office, Golden Joe's there looking at the notes. And then, as the music builds, the drum's gonna come in. It's Joe. Joe, Golden Joe walks out. He is wearing gold trousers. He's got a gold cape on. He's got gold glasses, Randy Savage, uh, Macho Man style, that say Joe there. He's got Joe on his knee pads. His wrist pads, gold, also say Joe. And then he opens up the jacket and Joe is written along the side <laughs> in the wingspan, just like Macho Man. And he just starts, yeah, celebrating with the crowd. Joe! 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 And on that, out comes Silver Bro, his older brother, his best friend, with his black mullet, and he's got his black pants on. They're kind of like, they're very nice fabric, and they've got silver stripes <laughs> down them, so it looks super cool. And he's got big shades on as well, much taller than his brother, but he loves him all the same. Joe. Joe! And he leads the crowd in Joe, Joe. Chant because he knows that Joe, Joe is the future of this business. And he grabs the microphone. Joe, you and I have been working for this for a long time. And tonight, we're finally going to get our chance to win the City British Wrestling Tag Team Championships. Joe, everyone! Joe! 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 Music starts again. Joe gets out of the ring. He goes back up to the ramp. Smoke starts to come up. Lights are flying through. We've got the stock footage, but it's different stock footage this time. This time, Joe's down in the construction site, organising some builds. Then he's helping some kids cross the road. And then he's tending to a little baby duck. In a who's sort of got a broken wing and he's nursing it back to health. And then the camera cuts outside the arena to sort of a film crew on a helicopter. And you can see the words Joe just come up in giant fizzling pyro. <laughs> and it cuts back to the crowd. Joe? 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 Joe, everyone! It's great to be here in... Mine, bro. Where are we? Norfolk. Norfolk! <laughs> That's where we are! Yeah! Uh, and don't worry, I've got my bro here, and together we're gonna beat these teams, and then we're gonna win the tag team's titles. <laughs> Joe, I've been in this business for a long time. I've never seen anyone, anyone, with as much talent as you have. Joe. Well, I know, and everyone here knows, my time is, it's almost behind me, but you, you're the future of this business. And together we're going to win the tag team titles, and then later, when the time is right, you are going to be Apex, and you will be City British Wrestling Champion of the World! Play the music! <laughs> Joe! 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 Okay. <laughs> when the audience finally Finally tired of chanting Joe. Take a while. <laughs> <laughs> Making their way down the ramp. Hailing from London, London. Giza and the Pearly Queen, the Cockney Knockers! <laughs> <laughs> Boo. From that London! <laughs> Boo London! Walking <laughs> the proper kind of Del Boy walk. <laughs> Did I just bash something? <laughs> okay. yeah, walk with the proper double walk down the ramp are the Cockney Knockers. Giza, who is a short, lean, thickly but 
leanly muscled, um, bald, uh, gold-toothed, uh, boot and trouser wearing, proper bruiser looking kind of fella. Uh, with a sparkle in his eye and a glint in his teeth. <laughs> and next to him, wearing a, uh, a two-piece uh, black suit uh, decorated with pearls from top to bottom is Pearly Queen, his tag team partner and beloved wife. <laughs> uh, they make their way quickly down the ramp. None of that fancy pyrotechnics, lasers, smoke and pretension. They're here to wrestle and they're sure. here to fight. Um, and they're here to do it right now. Yeah, you, you, you want to get over with the crowd, with yeah. the showmanship. This is opiate there's of the masses. Pirate, We're giving them entertainment. Yeah, the crowd is muttering Joe to them. <laughs> <laughs> Joe is also muttering Joe to them. <laughs> Joe, 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 you got this, Joe. Uh, okay, uh, we start the match obviously with Gold and Joe in control. Uh, uh, you're also the legal wrestler on your side, and Geezer is the legal wrestler for the company. Knockers standing in his corner, ready to go. Jukes up. You got this, Joe. Cheers, you got bros. This. Right. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to try and do is run right at Geezer and just hit him with a punch. Um. Cool. That's power. It's a seven. My uh, seven. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Joe. Joe. Yeah. 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 Joe. 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 Walk round and do it, get a Joe chant going. <laughs> yeah, you clock him the draw. Not yeah. bad, son. Not bad. Not bad. We all join up. And he um, returns another punch in your face. Oh. Oh. Roll, 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 roll on power. Nine. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's an unstoppable boom. machine. <laughs> he, he whiffs past your face. You avoid it easily. Yeah, Joe! Yeah. Joe! Look at his teeth! Joe! 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 Still your sneaky him. bastard! <laughs> so now I'm gonna do what I call the golden shower. <laughs> and okay. it's, it's where I'm just gonna rain down punches. So it's ten punches, all left jabs. One, two, three, four, but sort of the crowd again, Joe, to every punch. <laughs> and then uh, the last one I amp everyone up for. Oh! oh. Start running oh, the ropes. Oh. And it's just another left jab. <laughs> For a punch, that's probably going to be power again. Seven. Seven? Seven, boom. Um, yeah, yes, tell, us, tell us how it connects with the geezer's jaw. The last one, the ten one, is the most devastating because it's the tenth. And it just knocks him down. He, he scrambles over to his pearly queen. <coughs> Whoa, what a load of old cobblers. <laughs> he slaps her in the hand. She leaps over the, uh, leaps over the rope, um, sprints towards you and goes for a slide right in the scotch eggs. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Those are the legs. Going down but Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so you can run on work for this. Oh, oh look at him. Yes, ten. magnificent. Ten. Yep. Leap into the air, she slides straight under your legs and misses. Lights us up on the other side. I cackle with laughter. <laughs> <laughs> You're too slow. <laughs> um, roll on Joe's look. Where's your look? Plus two. Uh, that would be, yes, uh, seven. Oh wait, no, your, my, your look is minus one. No, no, I, I guess. Oh, you're working on Joe's. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Seven. Um, yeah, the Pearly Queen turns her head towards you. What? Uh, her focus is elsewhere. Mm. What are you doing? I start doing a sort of comedy behind the back pantomime. Oh. Because <laughs> oh. I'm going to punch this woman in the back of the head. <laughs> what a face. Okay. Um, <laughs> God. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that would be. I'm worried about this joke. Yeah. You could have waited for us to turn around. It's just that she, she tried to hit me in the balls. The legs? The legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the scotch eggs are the legs. the legs. Oh, I thought scotch eggs were... <laughs> no. On realising that, Joe Joe's going to do something a little less severe. <laughs> He's going to do a bull joke, which is a, a bulldog. <laughs> That's not even a pun. <laughs> not even a bull joke. Okay, you can roll, you can roll and work for that. Oh, that's bad. Four. Oh. Is it on work? You got minus one work. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Pearly Queen sees in the reflection of your eyes, in the reflection of um, uh, Silver Bro's eyes, and it's an expression. Still got my sunglasses on. Oh, um, <laughs> too big. Something is coming up behind. She turns around just in time and hits you with the hits you with me Daisy Roots, and she kicks you with a big boot right in the chest. Boom! Sends oh. you onto your back on the mat. I'm gonna try and scramble and tag out right away to Silver Bro. Okay, um, you can run your heat with Bro for that. Oh, that's plus three. So that's uh, that's nine. I step over the ropes because he's a big, tall lad. He gets in there. He points at this 
upstart. You're punching my brother. Oh, that's, that's it. So, get in for a headlock. Proper headlock style, proper old school veteran headlock style. And then I'm gonna whip her into the ropes. And so she comes back, and you shoulder block her. Oh, oh, oh that's that's devastating. devastating. <laughs> yeah, you can have you can have power for that for sure. Oh, oh nice. it's a Fatality. <laughs> yeah, there's a crack as she connects with your shoulder and stumbles back onto the mat. She starts to make her way back towards Geezer again now. Scrap her by the leg, <laughs> pull her back, pick her up, headlock, oh. uh, into the ropes. Shoulder. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, power again. Oh, wow. Oh, it's big. 12. Oh. Crack, with exact same spot. She Boom, spent. back on the mat again for a second time. For a second time, starts trying to crawl towards... Um... By the way, back <laughs> back. Seeing that this is going to happen, I'm just going to whip her into the corner, and I'm going to run against the corner, I'm going to run to the other corner, and I'm going to charge to hit one of my signature moves, the silver splash. It's like a singer splash. Um, it will work for this. Oh, it. It's a bit more technical. That's a five. The metals can't be doing the work stuff. No, no. I realise my error now. Can you, can you describe what that stinger looks like when you're trying to attempt it? So it is like the singer splash, so I'm just diving in to do a big splash in the corner. But I'm assuming she would then duck out of the way and I would hit my head up onto the, uh, the top turn buck with like a big, oh, my head. Not, not, not quite as nice as that. As, oh. as, you, as you dive down towards her in a dazzling display of speed, she moves out of the way, positions herself behind you as you fall, um, and gets you in the fireman's hose, which is a nose lock. She gets her two long manicured oh, fingers, um, digs them right under your nostril, pulls your head back, pulls you back, so her knees are now resting on your spine, and using your nose as the only point of grip, just tugs and tugs and tugs and tugs. I'm reaching for you, you're too far away! Oh, get in, man! It's the rules! <laughs> <laughs> you're holding the tag rope. I'm holding the tag rope, bro. I'm gonna try and grab her by her fingers reach them out of my nose, which is actually, they're quite far in. Oh yeah. <laughs> and they're really uh, gonna try and pull, I'm gonna try and pull them out. Okay, um, and, like, you'll shit. need a hard success on this, but you can roll on power. Oh, snag. That's not gonna oh. oh no, that'd be an eight. You managed to pull them out about maybe half an inch, and then you just lose your grip, and the fingers shoot back in. Oh, oh god! It's right up into the cartilage. Oh, no! Oh. Oh. The knees are really pressing with your spine bro. at this point. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm going to try and shuffle my way in the <laughs> holes <laughs> so I can try and reach for this tag because my brother's not getting in. Oh, you can roll on power again for that shuffle. Uh, that'll be a ten. Just about, yeah. Ugh. I need to drag Pearly Queen along with you as you go. You just hit that tag. I'm trying. I'm reaching as far as I can. Hug <laughs> me, brother! <laughs> no! Joe! Joe! <laughs> Joe hops over the top rope and he runs in and he starts to do his, uh, the Joe line. <laughs> so he's gonna keep on bouncing off of the ropes. Joe, 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 Joe. And then flying clothesline hits the pearly queen. Um, I'll let you roll and look for this one because yeah. it's the most natural time I've done. <laughs> Six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you re-roll? What are your re-rolls? Uh, my re-rolls are you got for, you for belief or to protect my reputation. That's got your reputation, right? Yeah, you're get, doing a hot tag. This is yeah. like the pinnacle of the 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 golden boy. For a promise or threat, and I was doing a lot of sort of promising with the Joe. It's, it's following through on one. It's following through on a promise that you made earlier. Um, but you can you can you can do your re-roll on um, protect your reputation. But it's your only one this yeah. episode. Go on, re-roll. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna re-roll. Come on. Uh, okay, that's oh, a seven. That's it's a seven. Look. It's seven. seven. Yes. It's seven. Oh, yes, that's fine. We're okay. You, you hit the Joe line. Boom. Boom, down onto the mat again. She's hugely dazed at this point, but it's starting to shuffle her own way towards her corner. I'm just going to hold off because I'm babyface Joe, Golden Joe, and the Pearly Queen's going to make the tag, and he gets in. I'll let him out with a Joe kick, which is a drop kick. Okay, uh, well, the drop kick is pretty... Yeah, you can do work for that, yeah. Oh, no. Work for power. It's an eight. It's, well, it's a seven with the minus one of work. So yeah, the pearly queen tags out. The geezer leaps back in like oh, that's, that's right on the muzzle and breaker, <laughs> <laughs> and starts making his way towards you. Immediately intercepted with the drop kick. He's boom down on the mat now. Let's work towards the finish. Yep, I'm gonna I'm go over. In the corners, trying to snot myself out. I've just been like, I've got like nails stuck up in my oh, nostrils. I'm trying oh, to snot them out. I go over to uh, Silver Bro and make the hot tag because we're gonna go for our. Uh, and double team finisher. Indeed we are. So I'm going to uh, grab the geezer 
and uh, get him up into uh, the Silver Spooner, which is a jackhammer move. Hold him up into the air. I'm just going to flex for a little while while I hold him up into the air. While I'm going to hit the rock solid, which is where I just bounce off the ropes, ring the, run the ropes for ages. Every time I hit the ropes, the crowd can't chant, Joe, 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 Joe,
holding in a tear. A uh, knock, knock, knock on the door, and the little referee comes in. You, Mr. Flips, it's time for your uh, very unfortunate match. All right. See you out there. I'll be there. This way, this way, and he ushers you out the room. I just slowly slide off on my skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> my more, the most mournful skateboarding possible. It's one half of like, a, like a Charlie Brown. Milkman. You were left on your own for a moment just to gather yourself uh, in the locker room. And as you um, get up and get ready to head to the ring, someone else enters the locker room just out of camera shot. Okay. Management wants to speak to you. Or I'll lead the way then. And we cut back to the ring. Oh! oh. What? <laughs> the following contest is scheduled for one four. One, one four. four. The loser will be fired from Ooh. City British Wrestling forever. Steps. Oh. Let's do a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Making her way to the ring, hailing from Whipsford, Reading, the Denny Matrix! Okay, this time, <laughs> it appears at the back of, at the top of the ramp, a giant denim pocket on wheels that's being pulled by 45 denim coats. <laughs> And they're all crawling along on the floor, like kind of zombie style. It's a bit grotesque, this one. And you just see, peeking out of the top of the pocket, is the denim matrix. Just <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm very happy. She's very, very snug in there as well. So it's a really nice, tight fitted pocket. It's, you know, it's like it's, it's a woman's jean pocket, you know, the sort of ones where they don't want you to fit a phone in it. <laughs> um, and then all of a sudden, it gets driven straight into the ring, and she pulls herself out, and she is wearing a full length ball gown made out of denim and it is just huge and massive it's like a princess star and she lights a match and she set fires to it and the whole thing just explodes in the epic glory of pyrotechnics to reveal her usual skin tight denim ripped genius <laughs> you hunger games there yeah kind of, but better <laughs> you have a moment on the mic oh do you mind okay i've worked so hard to be here you have to know that that fighting is is in my genes. I'm going to boot cut this boy straight out of the ring, and I don't care what flares he has. I'm here for the skinny. <laughs> Doesn't make sense, but lean into it. <laughs> I am so proud of whatever I've done, and he better be afraid. Okay. Would you say you don't want to leave eyes? Good! <laughs> <laughs> I thought we weren't allowed to name brands. <laughs> <laughs> Making his way to the ring, hailing from Puddington, Yorkshire, Kid Flips! Flips! Just you see a spotlight on a huge poster which just has 90s written on it, and then suddenly. <laughs> He skates through the O, <laughs> and he is skating all around the ramp. He's grinding, he's ollieing. Are they the same? Doesn't matter. Yeah, and he skates down to the ring, and he turns around to kind of like uh, lock eyes with his mentor, and then notice his mentor isn't there. And he kind of like stumbles and like uh, picks up his skateboard and just being like, it's cool, bling, <laughs> bling, bling. Where, where your head out? And then he. Um, Flips uh, into the into the ring, over the ropes, lands on his skateboard on a perfect ollie. I don't know what it is, but it looks great. Uh, and then he dismounts, kicks the skateboard into the crowd. That's for you! And then I uh, climb up the turnbuckles and just look out at the crowd. I see I see my mom. She's always there. Hi mom! I, I try to cover my nerves. I'm not I'm not ready for this and I, I turn to look and still no moment, but it's fine. It's fine. Get myself in the zone. Drama intensifies. Do you want the mic? Or you can leave it. Uh, yeah, I'll take the mic. It's like, uh, thank you. Um, I, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm a bit nervous. You see, I, all my life I've wanted to to do this. I've 
I was very lucky to, to know someone who was able to teach me in the ways of the squared circle. And I'm going to fight to stay here because I've got a lot more to give and a lot more to learn. Wherever you are, I'm doing this for you. I'm ready. Uh, the bell rings, and with that, we'll start with you in control. Uh, I offer a hand to uh, the Denimatrix. <laughs> I go to shake his hand, but in the last second, I whip him into a headlock, but I call it a ziplock. <laughs> <laughs> and then I throw him against the rope into a clothesline. There's no need to change it, because it kind of works for me anyway. A <laughs> uh, clothesline, and I hope and try that he hits the mat straight off. Um, okay, you can roll on. For a closed line, you're rolling on power. Thanks. Oh, oh, mate. For Pete's sake. <laughs> oh, that's, that's really not good. Oh, that's that's really bad. That's, that's a one. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a snake eyes, though. It's, that's still technically just a fail. It's just a fail. I mean, <laughs> it's a fail, but yeah. I'm trying to make you feel better about this. <laughs> I'm just reassuring you that it could be worse. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, whoosh, whiffs over the top of Kid Flips, easily able to just Matrix style yeah. duck away from that. Flip backwards, kip up, I, uh, I jump onto uh, the ropes and hit the uh, live and kicking, which <laughs> is a springboard drop kick. Uh, springboard drop kick, absolutely, I'd work for that. That is eight. Boom. Drop kick connects straight with uh, Demonetrix's chest. It is she who hits the mat with a thump. You're on your feet, then Matrix is on the ground. What are you doing? Um, I sprint up to the top ropes to hit the Clarissa Explains It All moonsault. <laughs> uh, does that work as well, boss? Um, if it's from the top ropes, it kind of is. Uh, that is eight. I need you to explain to us why this is the Clarissa Explains It All moonsault. <laughs> Now, I haven't seen Clarissa Explains It All, but I assume it's a lot like a moonsault because it has a lot of impact, uh, it's uh, excellent presentation, uh, highly relatable, um, everyone loves Melissa Joan Hart. That's true. Cowabunga. <laughs> if you, if you, if you can say, hi Sam, as you leap from the rope, then I'll let you do it. Hey up, Sam! <laughs> uh, hit the eight. Uh, so, uh, and your moonsault connects just as Denimatrix gets mentioned to get off the mat. Boom, back down to the mat again. Okay, um, I, I, I'm going to go for the pin. I want, I want to get this over mm. as quickly as possible, mm. if that's all right. Sure. All right, uh, what am I rolling on? Um, you're just going to give them a roll? No, I say just roll it, a regular 2d6. Seven. Seven. Okay, you go in for the pin. Um, one, two, I kick, kick out. out. Yeah. Oh. Please, please, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you're at that stage now where you're so taken aback by this kick out, you're giving Denimatrix plenty of chance to get up and do a move. I have gotten up, and you are, I assume you're kind of still like on the ground ish, so I just grab the back of your neck and go straight for my knee, and hopefully cracking your nose open. Oh, crikey! Oh. Uh, you can roll on real for that. It's gonna go from stonewash to blood wash. <laughs> Oh! Oh, oh, it's a 12 plus 2, that's a 14! That's a natural critical! Oh, oh, okay, God. that is fantastic. Oh. <laughs> that was his face in two. Um, so it's your oh, knee, right? Yeah. Your knee can, goes like, straight up, in almost slow motion, you can see... <laughs> uh -huh. you, you can see the <laughs> denim clad knee just moving towards you, almost, almost at a, a pleasant meditative pace. <laughs> unable to move out of the way. Doom! Um, <laughs> the very first thing you feel is the soft and comfortable touch of denim, immediately followed by the hard push and pow of bone colliding with a cartilage oh. in your nose. <laughs> There's a kind of meaty grinding sound um, as your nose just collapses in on itself, almost becomes concave at this point, and blood just gushes down your face. Oh, yeah, actually going to look like a ninja turtle. <laughs> <laughs> um, beans! <laughs> um, it, it spreads down across your chest, across your legs. Um, something actually seems to fall out from it, something that it's... Maybe, like, maybe pure cartilage torn through the impact just drops onto the mat in a wet splotch. 
Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, I look around to like just see if my mentor is around. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cough a bit of blood and I notice a little bit of white <laughs> in there with the blood. I'm looking around, but he's nowhere to be seen. He's nowhere to be seen. What are you doing, Denimatrix? Uh, currently, I'm just dipping my finger in the blood and just drawing wallpaper. Oh. <laughs> um, I would say right now, Kid Flips is incredibly incapacitated. You, <laughs> you, you can go for the pin. I would like to go for the pin. Oh my god. That's a four. Yes, he's got heart! Okay. The heart and soul! So, so right now Kid Flips is just like scrambling around, <laughs> scrambling around the ring, blood and a little bit of milk gooping from his nose, looking for any sign of his beloved mentor. Um, you just stalk over him like some, some predator. Um, lean down, ready to take advantage, go in for the pin, and then crack! At the back of your head you, hear so, you feel something metal and solid connect with your skull, you collapse face first into the mat. You turn just in time to see the figure of Apex standing over you. Oh. Oh. You again! Strike five. And he <laughs> kicks you in the face. Um, Wait, that strike five! I didn't do anything! He just kicks you in the face again, oh bashes you in the back of the skull one more time, crack with this heavy, um, uh, no, with this heavy belt and makes his way out the ring. You come to at this point? I just, uh, I'm still, I'm not entirely, I don't know what's happened. I would, n I would never take advantage of this situation if I'd actually seen it, but I, you know, you did break my face. <laughs> uh, so I just, I, I, I just <clears throat> collapse with one arm over you in the ring. Uh, go for it. That's five. That's one, two, and a kick out. Oh. Uh, I, I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm going to stumble up to the top rope and try and hit my finisher. Uh, my finisher, the double corkscrew moonset. <laughs> it's called Round the Twist. <laughs> I look back over, I touch my nose and I say, Have you ever felt <laughs> like this? You can actually work for this. Uh, my work is six. <laughs> you, remember you got your re-roll as well? My re-roll, yes, absolutely. I hint, yeah. I, hint, I hint to what's behind the mask. I reach up, I notice the milk, and I think, oh my god, we have a conversation we need to have. <laughs> That's it. Plus work is eight. Oh. Take us through it. Oh. Uh, it flips <laughs> over in the air, beautiful, when strange things happen. Are you going round the twist, <laughs> lands, and I just hook the leg. Count me in, Dad. I mean, count, <laughs> <laughs> count me in, sir. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh! Ding, ding, ding. Your winner, Kid Flips. What? Flips. Flipping heck. I, 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 I raise a hand to you to try and help you up, and I say, uh, I'm sorry. I really am. I'm sorry. Um, I see your hand. I completely appreciate what's happened. I am a respectful wrestler, and I have. No regard for the rules, so I put your face into the rope, so I choke your throat into it until you submit. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> Frankie! <laughs> um, okay, I'm out on guess. Uh, <laughs> roll on power to maintain consciousness quickly. Minus two. Oh, it's yeah. not good. Ah, no, that's, no, no, that's bad. <laughs> you, you, you pass out and just yeah, collapse, collapse under the mat. There's a, a brief moment of, of pause and incredulity in the audience as they just take in exactly what's happened in the last couple of minutes. At the top of the ramp stands QC, his arms folded, oh, looking you in the eye. Oh. <laughs> you fired. <gasps> The camera cuts on that bombshell to the door to management's office, creaking open. 
and a dejected looking milkman stepping out. Just stand for a moment so the camera catches me. Just walk out shut. And we'll stop there. That's it for this week's episode of City British Wrestling's Sunday Night Lightning. We'll see you all next week. Thanks, Tom. That's it for this week's episode of No Rolls Barred. Really hope you enjoyed it. Check out the next episode this time next week here on Parts Fun Known. In the meantime, if you would like to get even more involved in the CBW universe, check out No Rolls Barred's Patreon. The link is in the description below and there are all sorts of fantastic ways you can get more from the series. There are behind the scenes footage, there's production podcasts, booking podcasts with myself and Tom, live streams with me and you can even create your very own CBW wrestler which will be put in the show. And if you can't wait until next Sunday, there's even 48 hour early access. So what are you waiting for? Head to our Patreon and check out the rest of the amazing content here on Parts Unknown.